In this video, you'll learn how to use the particle variable and function primitives in the Particle Device OS to read from sensors and control devices through the Particle Device Cloud. This functionality is available on all particle devices like the Photon, Electron, and on all particle third generation devices. If you'd like to follow along, you'll need a single particle device and one or more sensors or actuators to use with the particle primitives we'll cover here. For this video, we'll use the Grove Starter Kit for Particle Mesh with a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor as well as a chainable LED. In addition, to view variables and call functions, you'll need to be logged into the Particle Console or the Particle CLI. IoT projects often need to share the data they collect or enable external systems to trigger actions. That is the I in IoT after all. To make connectivity easier, Particle provides a number of primitives in the built-in device OS, including variables, functions, and messaging with Particle Publish and Subscribe. With the Particle Variable and Function primitives, developers can access local device state, for instance, to retrieve the latest reading from a connected sensor, or call firmware functions to take action on the device, for instance, to turn on a light or move a servo. Because these primitives are mediated securely through the Particle Device Cloud, they can be accessed from other devices, the Particle Console, or even in web and mobile applications. Let's look at an example of each primitive. We'll create a variable to read the latest temperature from a Grove Temperature and Humidity Sensor and read it from the Particle Console and CLI. Then we'll do the same with a function that turns on a Grove Connected RGB LED. First, let's write the code. Open the Particle Web IDE at build.particle.io and create a new project. From here, you'll need to add two firmware libraries that make it easier to work with the temperature sensor and LED. The temp sensor library is named Grove Temperature and Humidity Sensor, and you can find it by clicking on the libraries icon on the left side and in the search box typing Grove underscore temperature. The result should show up after a few moments. Click Include in Project, select the name of the project you just created, and click Confirm. Now, do the same with the LED library, which is named Grove Chainable LED. Once both libraries are installed, you're ready to start using the variable and function primitives. A particle variable is a cloud accessible mapping to a local variable in your firmware. In this example, that's the latest temperature reading from a Grove temperature and humidity sensor. So start by creating a global variable to hold the reading. Then, configure the sensor by adding a global object for it in the initialization code in the setup function. In the loop function, we'll add some code to read from the sensor every 10 seconds and update the value of the global variable. We can use delay to do this, but the snippet here achieves the same result without blocking firmware execution like a delay would. Now let's add our particle variable in the setup function, using the particle variable function call. The first parameter is a string that represents the name that the particle device cloud should use to refer to the variable. The second parameter is the local firmware variable to map to the particle variable. This will be the global variable that we created a few moments ago. Once the particle variable is created, you can flash this code by selecting your device in the Devices tab and clicking the lightning bolt icon on the top left of the web IDE. After your device has been flashed and it's back online, it will start reading from the sensor, which you can verify in the console. Navigate to the dashboard for your device and look for the Variables section on the right side of the page. Look for the variable with the name that you just specified in code and click the Get button to retrieve its latest value. After the Particle Device Cloud securely accesses the value, it will display it on the page. Alternatively, you can use the Particle CLI and the Particle Variable command with your device name or ID and the name of the variable to read the value. Now let's add a function. Similar to variables, particle functions are cloud accessible firmware functions that can be called to trigger an action on your device. In this example, we'll create a cloud function that will turn on an RGB LED and allow you to specify the hue to set on the LED when the function is called. Start by initializing the LED object at the top of your code and in the setup function. Then, create a function called TurnOnLED and take note of the function signature. If you wish to use a firmware function as a particle function primitive, it needs to return an integer and take a single string argument. In the function, we'll add some code to parse the argument string to the hue value for the LED. 
Then we'll turn the LED on and specify the hue that was passed in. The final step is to turn this firmware function into a particle function, which we can do in setup. Just as with the variable primitive, the particle function primitive takes two parameters, a string representing the name and a reference to the firmware function. Flash these latest changes to your device and, once it comes back online, head back to the console and reload the page for your device. Now you should see the name of your function in the function section. Add a value between 0 and 1 for the hue argument and click Call. After the particle cloud securely calls the function for your device, you'll see the RGB LED light up. Alternatively, you can use the particle CLI and the particle function command with your device name or ID, and the name of the function, and the RGB argument to call the function itself. Congratulations! You have mastered messaging with particle variables and functions. To learn more, head over to docs.particle.io. Happy hacking!